Aloha everyone. Hi, this is Koa Beam from Kana Advisors, their lead graphic artist, and today I'm going to run a short brown bag on how to do some simple Windows tips and tricks for better screen recordings. These are tips and tricks that are either built into Windows or free applications or utilities that you can find online. Let's jump right into it. Okay, over on my main monitor here, you can see that it's a fairly high resolution, and wow, look at the size of my cursor and pointer. Well, that's intentional. That's the first thing we're going to address so that whenever you are showing on a high resolution monitor, it's easy to find their, your pointer and cursor and uh, easy to see for any of the viewers of the content you're doing. So we're going to go down to the Windows key and uh, go to our settings, open up our Windows settings dialog box and we're going to go to the ease of access and that cursor pointer setting is found here in cursor, cursor and pointers and it's this slider right here. I could make it even larger if I wanted, crank this the whole way up to 15 and you'll notice now my, my cursor is Jagundo and I could take it back down to like the default which is going to be either one or whatever. Uh, I normally daily drive my cursor at a size pointer of three because I find that easy to see on my 4k monitor but for demonstration purposes this 10 or 11 setting is going to be more ideal. The colors right here are high visibility colors. You can use any of the colors that look good for the content you're, you're showing. I particularly just like the green. Um, I find it easy to see so I'm going to leave it set it there. After we have these set, we're going to go over to the additional mouse settings and then go to the additional mouse options. The additional mouse options is going to open up our mouse properties dialog box. We go over to the third tab and down below under visibility, we're going to make sure we have check marked show location of pointer when I press the control key. Having this check marked means whenever I tap the control key, I get this lovely radial uh, zoom in that focuses on the point of my pointer no matter where it's at. Okay, so since that's checkmarked, I'm going to shut that down. Now we have our pointer all set up. We're going to learn how to use the magnifying lens. So go back to ease of access and we're going to go to the magnifying lens. Next thing down. Uh, magnifying lens can be turned on with this toggle here, but the best thing to do is learn how to use the keyboard shortcut. So the keyboard shortcut to turn on your magnifying lens is the Windows key and the plus key. I hit that and it fires up. Now, I have my default resolu uh, default magnification set up to be 200%, and then each time I hit the Control Plus key, it's going to do it in 100% uh, uh, increments. So I hit the Control Plus again, it's going to go up to 300. Hit the Control Plus again, it goes down to 400, and I can zoom the whole way out to 100%, which obviously has no effect on the window whatsoever. So I'm going to go back up to 200% and leave it at that as my default. Leave my zoom increment, set it on 100, it's a decent default. But I'm going to shut down that magnifying lens so I can show you some other options. All right, that magnifying lens size is changed right down here in change magnifier view. Now there's a few different options. I prefer using the lens because I'm using a three monitor setup and this is easier to zoom in on just a portion of the particular monitor I'm showing. But there are other options. There are full screen and docked and you can play around and see which one works best for you. Now if you choose the lens option down below here, you can change that lens size by sliding these sliders. You can see mine takes up about this much of the monitor apparently according to this digital representation visual representation of my monitor I can make that larger by taking these sliders up and down but I like this size I'm gonna leave it right there so once we have our magnifier set up the way we like and we know how to use it and we have our pointer set up so it's easy to see and follow we're gonna now make sure we're set up for success on our recording by going back to home going to the system and making sure we turn off notifications. Now we'll want to turn this back on when we're all done recording, but for now we want to turn it off that way we don't get any annoying pop-ups, uh, notifications about software or emails and that kind of thing. Okay, we have our notifications turned off. We're going to head over to power and sleep. Power and sleep, I'm going to set these to never, and then that way I don't have to worry about my screen or screensaver turning off or going into sleep mode while I'm in the middle of a presentation. All right, so those are our Windows settings. We've set our power and sleep to never. We've turned our notifications off. We've adjusted our uh, pointer and cursor settings, and we also have our magnifying lens set up the way we like. So I can close this down. Now I'm going to show you some handy Windows utilities you can find online. So the first thing is you may have noticed down below I have uh, whenever I click my mouse these notifications showing up down below. That is a piece of software called Karnak and it is a free application available online. And right here you will find it at code52.org slash Karnak. Let me zoom in on that URL so it's easier to see. So right there, code52.org slash Karnak. 
and let me shrink my window down into this size so it's easier for me to focus on it on my screen. All right. And now I'm going to shut my magnifying lens down so it's a little bit easier to follow around. We'll take our screen and make it a little bit bigger. All right, so Karnak is allowing me to capture this. Let me type something on screen so you can see how it captures the type. And now I will pre-say that I am not a very fast typer, so please bear with me. Hello, everyone. And that is showing you as I type. All right, so I use a forked version of Karnak that allows me to capture my mouse clicks. So you'll see as I'm clicking, I get this uh, red circles that go out, blue circles that go out if I right click. If I middle click, I get this nice yellow circle. That is found here at this forked version of Karnak if you would prefer to have your mouse uh, highlighting options not being done strictly through Windows. So you can get that at github.com slash bfritscher slash Karnak slash releases. And there you'll find he has all his mouse customization settings that you can download instead. All right, moving beyond that, if we need some beautiful imagery for our background images or title screens or transitions, I highly recommend going to unsplash.com. Uh, there you will find lots of royalty-free, uh, freely usable images a nice high resolution done by professional and uh, amateur photographers, all curated and divided up into different categories. You can do searches as you need. Now, if you need something to help you with layout and design of some transition screens or title screens or anything else, I next will recommend Canva.com. Now, none of these websites or utilities are sponsoring our video. They are just utilities or websites that we find handy and useful, particularly if you don't have access to any high-end software or other creation software on your system. All right, Canva.com has all these templates set up. Again, you can go into uh, finding uh, images that you can use and layouts you can use for presentation, Instagram posts, videos, and everything in between. Uh, they have a paid version, which gives you more uh, more utilities and is a little bit more robust. But the plain Jane version is good to play around with. Uh, you can set up a team uh, that invites other people into it, and you can share colors and assets and uh, designs and work on them in incrementally or to in tandem. Up to you. If you need a little bit more power, something a little bit more like Photoshop, you might want to try Pixlr.com. That's P-I-X-L-R.com. And it comes in two different flavors. There's Pixlr X and Pixlr E. Pixlr X is more of a photo enhancement tool, kind of like what you would find on your phone as an app. And then Pixlr E is a little bit more robust. It comes, uh, it's more of a Photoshop replacement. You can use layers and a bunch of other tools that you might be familiar with if you're used to using Photoshop. Uh, there's a paid version of it that again is a little bit more robust, it allows you to do some online saving of stuff and everything. Now if you need some awesome background music or video tra uh, video footage that you can use for transitions or background plates in your videos, uh, I highly recommend mixkit.co. Mixkit.co, you can get some good video stuff and you can get some stock music and some video templates. Uh, the video templates are done by pro uh, programs like uh, Premiere, I believe, is the one that they focus on. They might have some for After Effects and whatnot as well, but I believe Premiere is the one they focus on. So if you don't have Premiere, you still can use their music, uh, free stock music, and their free video clips that are great for background images and whatnot. But you can go to YouTube and do a search for royalty-free music, no copyright music. And this particular channel right here, I like. They have theirs broken up into different categories. It's fairly high quality, and they have a SoundCloud uh, website as well where you can download things. Um, the next thing, if you're doing screen capture, and uh, even though Windows has a built-in screen recorder, whether you know it or not, uh, to bring that open, you just hit the Windows and G key. It's part of the Xbox kit built into Windows. You do not need to have an Xbox subscription or uh, play games or anything like that. It will capture whatever the current open application is. Beyond that, uh, best thing to check out is OBS or open broadcast software. It is free and open source and it comes from Windows, Mac, and Linux and it is great for doing screen captures. But that's a video for a different time. Right now, these were the simple utilities that you could use online to make some great transition graphics, background graphics, and everything like that. You've now got your windows set up so your pointer is nice and big. You know how to do a nice focus using your control key. Uh, if you have Karnak installed, you can now capture your keyboard keystrokes and you're set. You've got your notifications turned off and everything is ready for your first recording. So if you have found this information helpful, 
please like and subscribe, follow and share. If you have any suggestions for other videos or have any questions, feel free to contact me. If uh, you're on Kana's chat, go ahead and send me a message and I will get over to you and help you if I can. And that's it for now. Please remember, analyze, assess, and execute, and I will catch you later.